By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another Timmy's Top 10. In today's Timmy's Top 10, we are looking at the Top 10 Old School Magic the Gathering Artists. Now, it was pretty difficult for me to make this list. It was actually pretty impossible for me to make this list because we're talking about art and how can you compare artists with each other. So what I've done, I've asked you on YouTube, on a community uh, YouTube page of my channel, I've asked you for feedback. I said, who is your favorite artist? And I gave you a few options in a poll. And I think almost a hundred people voted and people also left comments, tons and tons of comments saying, I like this artist because of this. I think that artist should be in your list. And these are the names that came out of those uh, messages. So these are all the names that you mentioned and I've only, I'm only looking at old school Magic the Gathering artists, so between 1993 and 1994. So these are the artists. Uh, and from this, all these names, I tried to make a list of 10 names. Now, I'm not calling it a top 10 anymore because it's actually not in order. I couldn't decide which artist was better than the other. I just, what I did, I looked at my personal preference and said, okay, from this list, these 10 are, in my opinion, um, I've made the most of an impression on me personally and I also think that these 10 artists have had a huge impact on the game of Magic the Gathering. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at the list. And we are kicking off this list with none other than the famous Douglas Schuller, and I think he is most known for the artwork that he did on Sarah Angel. Beautiful, stunning, amazing art. I think all of the Sarah Angels after this, and feel free to disagree, but they are nothing nothing compared with this original Sarah Angel artwork. And the same can be said of the next card here made by Douglas Schuller. We see the other side of the spectrum. We go from, from purity to pure evil. We're going to the demons, we're in demonic tutor. And look at that art, look at this look on his face. It's like there's, there's what's on his mind. He's scheming, he has a plan. And this, it really draws you in. And also for demonic tutor, all the new versions of the card. I mean, come on, give me a break. The original art is just number one ever, ever still and always will be. And now we're gonna look at my personal favorite. This won't come to you as a surprise. Of course, it is the Protocol Sorcerer. It is Timmy, the man that I named this channel after. And look at that look on his face. That is from the start, the first time that I had a Protocol Sorcerer in my hand, I was just looking at him and he was looking at me. And there's just this whole story behind this character that I mean, you don't know, but I think that's good art, that it kind of makes you wonder about who is this character? What is he thinking? What is he going to do? And and that is what I think is good art. Again, that's what I think. That's my opinion. Okay, this was Douglas Schuller, the first artist here on the list. Let's take a look at the next one. Next up on the list, we find Quentin Hoover. And of course, Quentin Hoover is known and loved for the art that he made for Vesuvan Doubleganger. What an art is that? What a card is that? Oh my goodness. People play this card not because they actually need it in their decks. They are playing this card because it's so incredibly, fantastically awesome. And whenever I play against a player that's that's boarded in Vesuv and Doubleganger, I understand why you did that because this is a beautiful, stunning card. What I like about Quentin Hoover's art is that there is so much detail in the picture. And this next card is also an example of that. Here we see Preacher and Preacher is, I mean, he's coming at you with his fist. He's looking at you. There's, there's, you can feel the energy. You can feel the madness in Preacher. But what is really interesting besides the character is everything happening around him. You see the church windows. You see probably that's a Bible there uh, sitting right next to him. So there's a lot happening. Quentin Hoover really uses each part of the picture and wants to tell a little story. And I think this this next card that's my personal favorite of Quentin Hoover is, is the proof of how much detail this man puts in his work. Look at this, this is dark pack. This is a summer edition print because it's summer edition. The colors are just so incredibly vivid. And look at this color palette. It's, I mean, it's stunning. You've got those darker colors at the back, which makes sure that, that, that pink and that red can really pop out of the picture and there's there's so much happening here this this woman is performing some kind of ritual there is, is i mean is that blood on her face or is that some kind of, of makeup or powder 
there is this this pink smoke coming from the fire there's this this candle you see this amulet as well there is so much to this this is not just a, a picture you know this is a story that he's telling here and he's using every inch of paper that he has to convey his story to tell his story through his art really beautiful amazing art here by quentin hoover these are the first two names let's go to the next one the third artist on this list is none other than Mark Poole. And for Mark Poole, I've actually chosen to show you something special because Mark Poole has made a lot of a beautiful, iconic pieces of art, Library of Alexandria, Balance. But I've actually chosen a different piece of art from Mark Poole in the game of Magic the Gathering. And this is it, it's Urza's Tower. And the interesting thing with this piece of art is that it actually consists out of four separate pieces of art because Urza's Tower is one of those cards that has four different st uh, pieces of art. So this is the spring edition of Urza's Tower. This is the summer edition. Of course, we then go to the autumn edition, which is my personal favorite because of those those colors. And it's, it's almost uh, Monet-like, you know, it's that expressionism that I really like, that simplicity of that forest, of that autumn forest, and still the colors are just so, so rich and the tower is just is standing there and you can see that same thing happening in in all the pictures the tower is just standing there and the surroundings are changing and also the light on the tower changes and here you see the last one you see the Urza's tower the winter edition and the nice thing is also according to mark Poole himself um when he uh, was asked in the interview to look back at his old school art because he's, he's still making art today or Pretty recently, he still made art, I believe, for Wizards of the Coast. And when he was asked to look back at his early work, he said that the Urza's Tower series and the Balance were like the two pieces of art that he was most proud of looking back at his older work. So that's really interesting. And that made me actually look at the Urza's Tower set again and think, you know what? I actually agree with you, Mr. Poole. I, I think so too. Another really iconic card of Mark Poole is, of course, this, the famous Basic Island the green and the blue basic island. For many play players, blue players, this is still the card that you want to have and you want to have this alpha edition and just 22 basic islands in your mono blue deck. For a lot of blue players, this art of this blue basic land is almost, almost has a religious value. You know, it goes further than just a piece of art for a lot of blue players so i just wanted to showcase this card as well okay so we've had three amazing artists let's see who is next we are continuing this list with a giant in the world of magic the gathering art together with christopher rush this is probably the person that has had the most influence on the way the game looks and that's jesper mirforce he actually designed the back of the magic card that is still being used this day and he did that together with Christopher Rush. He was the art director for Magic the Gathering in the early days of Magic but he also designed cards himself. And um, here we see Tropical Island and the reason that I want to mention this is he is known for the dual lands that he's made for Tropical Island. There are actually two stories attached to this. Now the first one is this is an alpha printing of Tropical Island, a picture of it. And as you can see in the, in the illustrations there at the bottom, it says Mark Poole. Now Mark Poole is a brilliant artist, but he didn't make this. This is actually uh, a Jasper Mere Force piece. And you can also see that in the left bottom corner of the actual art, you see that little kind of M symbol, uh, which um, which you clearly recognize as the signature of Mere Force. So Mere Force made this. And there's another story attached to this. Jasper has said that he has hidden himself somewhere in the tree line. So Jesper, if you're watching this movie, I have the feeling that I know where in the tree line you were standing, but I'm not quite sure. So please, the chances that you're watching this are slim, I know, but if you are, could you leave a comment? Can you tell me where exactly you are standing? It would be really nice. Another uh, card with a story and also um, a pretty card, a card that's pretty significant too, I think Jesper, is word of command. Now, the interesting thing is the story attached is actually quite funny. He was walking around with, allegedly, with a, a painting or some kind of picture of this artwork that you see on word of command. It wasn't meant to go on a card, but Richard Garfield saw it by accident and said, wow, this is 
great, this is beautiful art, I'm gonna put it on a card. And Jesper was like, well, no, not really, it's, I'm experimenting, and then it ended up on a card, and a card is Word of Command. Really cool card to play as well. Now, my favorite piece of art comes from the set The Dark, and it is this card, Elves of Deep Shadow. I just think it's boom. I mean, the way she looks at you, it's, it's very intense, it's very dark, it's very goth, I guess you could say. Um, this card has actually been nicknamed Alanis Morissette, so I, I guess, I guess, I can see that, I can, I can see that. Maybe a young Alanis Morissette, I, 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 could, I could see that. I, I once ordered a playmat of the Elves of Deep Shadow, but it never arrived, unfortunately. Uh, this is one of my favorite pieces of art in the whole game of, of Magic the Gathering. Um, yeah, so this is Jesper Mirforseer on the list. And let's see who's up next. We're at the halfway point, and here we find the legendary artist Melissa Benson. Of course, Melissa Benson is probably most known for her work on Shivan Dragon. And Shivan Dragon, it's it's beautiful. I think everything here fits. What the card does, the art, all the way to the flavor text, it all makes sense. In the flavor text, they they're talking about you, or they're not talking about you, but they're talking about that. Um, there, that that she even enjoys toying with with its victims like a cat toys with a mouse and it's exactly the, the the feeling that Melissa gives you with this art with this dragon coming from up high you're you're staying there feeling really tiny and you have this huge claw that's just gonna grab you and gonna toss you around um, it just this creature feels very mighty and very powerful and I remember um, you know revised is my alpha and of course she even dragon was also reprinted and revised and I thought, can you actually draw a Shivan Dragon or can you can you get it out of a regular booster pack? Is it actually possible? Such a huge and mighty creature. This, yeah, I mean, that's how big of an impression this card made on me and I, I think on everybody who was, who was playing Magic in those days. Um, and the next card actually is another really powerful creature, also um, a piece of work by Melissa Benson in a similar style because she's really known for um, her work and really using bright and, and vibrant colors that really pop out and make the creature really stand out. And that's, that's what she does here with Lord of Atlantis as well. So you've kind of got this background that's like one steady color or, or a few like darker, darker shades or not so outspoken, let me put it that way. And then you have really, the, the, in this case, the Lord of Atlantis with those bright colors again. It's the same thing as what she did with the Sheevan using those bright colors to really make her creature pop out. And then, the nice thing here is uh, on this third example, which is my personal favorite artwork of Melissa Benson, she does the same thing. And here we see Nightmare. And with doing the same thing, there's nothing wrong. Actually, it's beautiful. And here she's um, used a bright yellow and bright red to really make this horse, this nightmare come to life. And I think I wanna use this moment to advocate on behalf of Nightmare, because it's not seeing a lot of play lately. And I would love to see this card more often, especially when you're playing Underworld Dreams. Flavor-wise, you have to play Nightmare as well. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be nice. It Magic is also a game of flavor, you know? And I think, I believe in flavor wins. I believe in flavor wins. I think if you have an Underworld Dreams and you play Nightmare, that's such a big flavor win that the actual outcome of the game it's not so important anymore. I mean, look at how beautiful this card is. If you're fortunate enough to own an alpha or a beta edition, you just have to play this. And when, when it comes in, into the game, when you play it, it's almost like it's illuminating. It's so bright, it's like light coming out. I really, I would advise you to at least give it a try, okay? Let me know in the comments below if I convinced you, because that gives me a good feeling, because I would love to see Nightmare more often. So that's Melissa Benson. Let's see who is next. This list wouldn't be complete without Ron Spencer on it. And of course, we all know Ron Spencer for his card Terror. And it's just, it's for me, it embodies black magic. This is what you do as a black mage. People are so scared of you, they just, they die just from the scare, you know? That's what happens with Terror, just boom. And and that's that's why this card, I guess, I think is, is, is such an, important card for Magic Gathering because it's it represents the color black. And you know, it's not just a piece of art, it represents the entire color. 
And um, I have another card for you, which doesn't represent an entire color, which is not very well known, but which I think is still a beautiful piece of art by Ron Spencer. And he makes entire, he, he, you see that one eye of that creature there looking at you in, in, in pure fear. And in this next picture, we see a completely different connection that you get through the eyes of what he's made. And that is Marsh Viper. So here we see Marsh Viper, the snake, looking at you in a completely different way, but in in a sense, making the same connection through that direct contact that the snake is making with you, just like the card Terror is doing that as well. So the snake is, you're actually watching down and the snake is looking up, you like, ha you dumb fool, I'm gonna bite you now. And um, that's actually what, what of course happens in real life as well with, with, with snakes. You don't see them, you step on them and they, get, they can get aggressive, especially the poisonous ones are the most dangerous ones and, and they're also the ones that are very vibrant um, and very colorful. So this one's also very colorful. And I just think this is really a stunning piece of art, this, this Marsh Viper. It's, it's just the color, the, 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 the sunlight on the skin of the snake, it's, it's stunning. But now I'd like to show you my favorite piece of Ron Spencer art and it's actually from the Fallen Empires expansion, the only card from the Fallen Empire expansion in this video and that's uh, Necrite. And I just think this is so gruesome. This is really like this Halloween picture. It's it's really a haunted house idea. Um, it's so gruesome. And, inter and, and, and when I was kind of looking up this art, I also saw the card Troll Retainer, which is just gross, uh, but also beautiful because it's gross, if you know what I mean. And then I read that that card actually was influenced by the art of H.R. Geiger. And H.R. Geiger is, if you don't know who he is, he is um, the art director of all the Alien movies. So Alien himself actually was designed by H.R. Geiger. So, and, and you can kind of see the influence coming back in these pieces from, from Ron Spencer, uh, at least the pieces he did for the, for the Fallen Empire expansion. So that, I thought it was quite uh, interesting. So this is it for, for Ron for now. Let's continue to the next artists on this list. Mark Tedden, of course, Mark Tedden is on this list. And um, I'd like to, see, he's made so much iconic art, but I just, I have to start somewhere. I'm just gonna start with Jews and Jin here. It's the poster boy for Arabian Nights. It's fantastic art. I think, I've always wondered who is that guy that he's holding there. I assume it's a flying man. And I always think, okay, how did it get there? I mean, was it sent by the other mage to attack? And did it just, you know, got beat up by this Jews and Jin? Did it have to jump block? This Jusum Jin, um, you know, what's the story here? And I think that's so good about this art is that you're wondering what is the story of this picture? What has happened between these two? And how did this little puny flying man get himself into this uh, situation? And um, another, another piece of art that's actually more, maybe even more iconic than Jusum Jin, and that's also a painted made by Mark Tevin, is Chaos Orb. And Chaos Orb, we see it right here, is just, it's literally an oddball. Literally. Well, I guess it's an odd orb. But, I mean, look at this piece of art. What is happening here? A Chaos Orb. It's kind of an orb, but it has eyes and a mouth, and it's puking lava. I mean, what's going on? I mean, this is weird art on a weird card, and I guess when you combine those two, you get brilliance, because it makes sense. It makes perfect sense that Chaos Orb has art that looks like this. It fits and it makes perfect sense that we're playing a game where you can kind of have to flip a card from a feet high and has to flip at least 180 degrees and then hit the target. It makes perfect sense. Why not? You know, why not? And it's actually, it's great fun and it's one of the most memorable moments in, in games when you're when you're flipping the Chaos Orb. My favorite piece of art by Mark Tedding are not Jusim Jin or Chaos Orb. My favorite piece of art is this card, the Leviathan and the Leviathan is beautiful. It's a 10-10 creature and um, what I guess what I like so much about the art is that he's basically doing the same thing as what he um, did with Jews and Jin. Um, he's showing you skill. Uh, so he's showing, hey, Leviathan is really, really big. So how does he do that? He decided to draw a little lighthouse there. And that lighthouse is so small compared to the Leviathan that it gives you this immediate feeling of whoa this leviathan is huge you know this is such a big creature and he's actually done the same thing with Jusum Jin where he's holding this really little puny human 
and it instantly gives you this feeling of scale and of okay this is really a big a big creature so for me leviathan is my favorite but mark Tennant has made so many great pieces of art uh, let me know in the comments below what your favorite uh, piece of Tennant art is and uh, here we are going to continue with the next artist on the list and we are going to the last three artists of this list and of course we have to include Christopher Rush. Christopher Rush has been so immensely important to the visual aspect of Magic the Gathering. He has made the back, designed it together with Jasper Mirforce and of course he is the artist behind the most legendary epic card Black Lotus. And there's another card, Lightning Bolt, also a Christopher Rush piece of art. But my favorite piece is a card that you actually don't see that often you know it's probably understandable when you look at the stats of the card but when you look at the art of the card i do think it's kind of a shame and that is desert nomads i really really like the art of this card also because i am a star wars fan hey i admit it and this really reminds me of star wars as a matter of fact i'm it has to be that christopher rush got inspired by the star wars movies when making this piece of art i mean just look at it um i I would love to have these three guys on my team. And I think it should have been at least 3-3, not 2-2. At least 3-3. Let me know what you think. Oh, by the way, it's interesting. Uh, Christopher Rush was one of the artists that got, got asked to come back uh, to, to make new designs for cards uh, for the series Time Spiral when they tried to kind of recapture the, the lost art of Magic the Gathering in the early days. So I thought maybe that was interesting little fact for you to share here. Uh, on the channel. Uh, only two more to go. Which ones do you think are still coming up? Mm, I'm not gonna tell. <laughs> You'll just have to wait and see. Let's take a look at the next artist. And just before the close, we're almost there. This is not, uh, name number nine. We're finding Amy Weber on this list and of course she belongs on this list. The beautiful iconic artwork that she did for the card Time Walk really shows her style as well. She loves to work with gears and she likes artifacts and you know she loves to make drawings for artifacts um, th this ex actually is another great example of, of that because it is an artifact and that's ornithopter very iconic card you know zero casting cost o2 flying creature and of course this is inspired by leonardo da vinci's sketches of his flying machine um, and this last one is actually is my favorite piece of art by amy weber and what i really like about it, these style of pictures i'm just going to show you the time elemental but also for instance um mishra's war machine is that you can really there's a lot of things you can look at those little gears they all seem to have a function and seem to be connected and you're kind of trying to look at the art and trying to decipher okay how would this mechanical being work how could i possibly build it myself you know it's so there's so much fantasy and it's so old school in the sense that it's all mechanical. It's not digital, you know, these are not driven by computers. These are all mechanics that are kind of working together, all those gears. And that's what I really like about Amy Weber. In a way, it kind of reminds you of an, an antique toy shop, you know, where you find all these old toys that may have some kind of magical powers. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm making sense here, but that's kind of what I see when I look at uh, Time Elemental. An amazingly cool card and um, just beautiful to see and a lot of fun to play, by the way. So if you have one, start playing it. It's tons of fun. Okay, we're going to the last name on this list. Now remember, this is not your traditional top 10 where I go from, okay, this is my, my least favorite of my favorite artists and this is my favorite artist i couldn't put these artists in order i've had like it was really difficult for me to actually make this top 10 list um so and, and please disagree man feel free to disagree this is my opinion let me know in the comments below who you think is the best artist or what your top 10 list looks like so now we are going to the final name of all these 10 artists and to me they're all equally great let's take a look at the last name and the last name on this list is none other than Richard Kane Ferguson. And yeah, fantastic artist. Um, I've Joe picked here, I've just picked three cards that he's made, three golden cards that he's made uh, in the set Legends because I feel that 
that was just such a big influence that that he's had on Magic the Gathering that I mean when I think of Richard King Ferguson I think of the first golden cards of Magic the Gathering and I'm thinking of legendary creatures and what I like about you know his work and Hazazon of Tamar is an example of that is that you know when you have a card that does something really cool and funky like Hazazon Tamar um, like Deacon uh, Black Blade and you also have fantastic art. That's when this beautiful combination happens that people just want to play with it. Even though it's difficult to play with it because you need all these different colors, you need all this, this weird ability, so you need to really invest in that and making that happen. But the card is just so cool that you actually want to do that. So Houses on of Tamar here in Legends, beautiful. Another example of one legendary creature that he's made is Jasmine Boreal. And the reason that I want to show this is this is actually just a vanilla creature. It's a four or five creature. So you would think, isn't that kind of boring? But because he portrays the character Jasmine so interesting and, and, and so well, it kind of makes you want to play and have her in, in your deck. You know, you want to play with this card. So it, it makes, it adds so much value to the to the card if, if the art of this card wouldn't be any good people would just be like oh yeah i mean jasmine whatever but because of this art because of that look in her face because of that that hair you know that 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 action I mean, she's looking behind she's having a start there's something happening here you think okay this is really a card that i want to play and i have to admit here in this case flavor text and the card again really make a good connection with each other making the card even stronger then my favorite piece of art, okay, get ready, is Ramses Overdark. This is actually a card I do not own. Um, I have never played it, but it's just such a badass. I mean, look at it, and it's clearly inspired by the Norwegian uh, mythology. So this is like this big dude, and it's also something that Richard Kane Ferguson uh, gets part of his inspiration from. It's from uh, Norwegian mythology. Uh, maybe also interesting to know is that he he gets a lot of his inspiration out of nature like many artists do and but he translates that in making pictures that um that have that all the colors that he uses in a picture usually come from the similar color palette and what you get then is that you've got this flow in in his art it's not even though you can see that ram says over dark is just this this separate uh, entity on um, in the art you also see that the the two what were they actually those two monsters there <laughs> standing in, in front let me know if you know what they are they look very fascinating they're kind of also part of him and part of like the whole picture is part of each other if you know what i mean you see the same thing happening in houses on tamar so you see these separate elements but because he's using everything from the same color palette there's this flow in his art that everything is connected everything is intertwined there's this very natural way to it. And that's that's something that, that Richard King Ferguson wants to show in his pictures, that it's the same energy, that it's, it's connected in a way. So these are my favorite pieces of art. We've now went through 10 Magic Gathering old school artists. If you're still here, thank you. And please let me know what you think of the video. I know that sometimes I have the tendency to ramble on a little bit, but it's just because I'm so enthusiastic about these pieces of art. And here we see an overview of all the 10 cards that I have picked. And when I'm looking at them, it's kind of a odd collection of cards. I don't think that I could play these in a deck. Then again, I see a lot of blue, green and black, blue and black maybe. Who knows? I'm not sure how to put Desert Nomads and Urza's Tower together in this brew, but okay. And no white card, actually. Okay, that's in that's interesting. Let me know what your favorite white card art is. I mean, I do love Sarah Angel and Balance. Anyway, it's, it's difficult to pick. These are my top 10, my favorite top 10 pieces of art in Magic Gathering connected to my favorite artists. Let me know who your favorite artists are. Thank you for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can like us. You can leave a comment. You can click the notification bell if you haven't done that yet. You can subscribe. I mean, every subscriber really, really helps. Um, and you can watch the video, which you already have already done. So thank you very much. And we also have a Patreon page where you can support me and the channel financially so that we can get it to the next level. 
Um, that's about it. There's actually probably an info card appearing right now that you can click on that will take you to that Patreon page. Thank you very much for watching. And before you go, I'd like to ask you a moment of your attention for the Patreons of Timmy Talks. And I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het is, ik het is, zomba kazee!